I've got art books to share with y'all today, and I'm excited about these. These are not all that I've been reading and looking at, but these are my top faves and the ones that I want to share with you. So let's start. Urgh, they're pretty heavy. There's some big ones. Let's start first with learning slash compositional stuff. I've got two here. One I recommend more than the other, but they were both helpful to me. This one right here, I feel like is a must. I will tell you this though, it is hard. It's like hard language, hard, yeah, it's a hard read. I could only read a little bit at a time but there are some compositional things. It's very academic, and so I think that's probably why it feels hard, um, but also the way the language is, but it is so helpful with composition. Uh, there was just a lot of helpful things about it. I finished it a while back and started this one, and I am now gonna go back and read this one again because it was so good, and it just was, deep, so I feel like it needs a second read through. If you are new to painting or landscape, I don't recommend this. I feel like this is much more advanced, um, very advanced. If you're ready to like really kind of push it and learn more about composition, I've been feeling the lack of composition and the struggle, and so I have been really reaching for books to help me. I just ordered several more like teaching, compositional, um, just a whole bunch of other books that I will be sharing if they are good. Let's talk about this one. There were a couple concepts in this uh, that were helpful and that were, for me, probably like worth the whole book and worth reading it. I actually have just a little bit more left to read. I think I have like one or two more chapters. This one I definitely have to like sip because I'm trying, I've been trying to think of a nice way to say it. I feel like this book could have been summed up in like one pamphlet, at least the things that I got out of it. I feel like there was a lot of like filler, just kind of talk, like I kept feeling like, okay, get to it. Don't, I don't need to know how like, there's a lot of variety in the landscape and I don't know, just kind of, there was a lot of fluff, I felt like filler, but it was very helpful and I'm glad that I read it. There was some stuff with perspective and composition. I'm trying to remember. Maybe it was this angles and consequent value. Yeah, I think this chapter was probably worth the whole book. Again, if you're a beginner, I do not recommend this. If you need help going to sleep, I do recommend it because it would often make my eyes like real droopy. I'd read for just a few minutes and then I'm like, I'm halfway asleep now, just because of the filler language, but it was good for the couple tips that I got out of it. Um, I'm happy I got it. Okay, this is another one that I got, Rembrandt is in the Wind, that I stopped about right here, only because I'm really enjoying it, and we've got a trip in May coming up that I thought this would really make a good going to the beach, read on the beach book. So I can't like fully attest to it, but the first chapter, I think it was the first chapter, the chapter that talks about beauty, there was just some concepts in here at the very beginning that I just thought, yes, yeah, beautifying Eden, where he talks about basically like in the West, we don't appreciate beauty for beauty's sake. We're interested in truth and, wisdom and knowledge and that kind of stuff. Just talking about the value of beauty and it's just really good. So then each chapter he takes a different artist and talks about them. What are some of the, I know Rembrandt, who else? Where's the list? I was gonna try to tell you the, ah, here we go. Lilius Trotter, Henry Tanner, Vincent Van Gogh, just a bunch of really great ones. Michelangelo, so. This one's been really good, and I'm looking forward to getting back to it on the beach. Okay, Emma Carlisle talked about this book, one of, I think, her Patreon sessions, and I bought it immediately. It was funny. She was kind of like, you don't have to rush out and get it, and I, 
she'd barely opened the book and I went and ordered it. I found a, a lot of artists already knew about. Each chapter is about different still life artist. I kind of also thought maybe it would like stir me back up for still lifes. It did not do that, but I did. It almost did it. <laughs> uh, I just am too like engrossed in landscapes right now, but really good mix of artists and just tons of inspiration. I loved reading just a short little bit about each one. It wasn't written in like a heady above your head kind of way just very accessible and i finished this book recently and went and bought amber creswell amber creswell bell that's kind of a mouthful her landscape book she has a abstract one that's out that's new but the landscape one i just ordered and i can't wait for it to get here so if it's good i'll share it with you but this one was wonderful i mean it just yeah i flew through it it was really good very very worth the money Lastly, I wanted to share this book. This is a reference book, not an art book. I love this book. I'm very picky about my bird reference books. I only have like two that I really, really love, but I love this. You're not going to believe the way it's laid out. Um, I have a lot of sticky notes because I sticky the pages. So each like breed of bird or I don't know how, how it's exactly laid out, but basically like each bird type is all laid out on the page. And I just love this because I don't, when I paint birds, I don't paint like, I'm not going for like a likeness. And I love that I can kind of just pick and choose like, oh, I like that guy's beak and I like this, the markings here. It is gorgeous. I absolutely love this book. This book is massive. It is a honker. Very fat. Everything about it's big. And I feel like for the price, I can't remember what I paid, but I feel like for the price, it was amazing. Okay, I want to show you. I feel like I marked it. Let me show you the owls. I mean, it's like inspiration for miles. So it's not the whole species. I guess whatever species this is ended and then the owls start. Look at this, at owls, owls. Oh, there's, I could, first off, I was just like, wow, I can't believe there's that many owls in the world. So many owls, but just so much inspiration. I also love that it's rendered in an illustration style. I like that. It already just takes out some of the detail. Uh, I highly recommend this book. This stays... Like, I've just been using it like crazy. I've been painting birds like crazy lately. I'm trying to, like amp myself up to do a workshop, an online workshop this year for birds. So highly recommend this book. So there are the books, just kind of array of books that I've been reading and getting into and I wanted to share those with you. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I found some old footage back from November. I think it was November when I was out painting at a local park and I haven't used that footage. I don't know what happened. It's just kind of like lost footage. Isn't that what they say like on TV when it's like, oh, oh no, it's never before seen footage. That's what I have for you. So I thought, well, I'm going to plunk that in here at the end of my little book, blah, 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 whatever my book, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to plop that in here. Came out to a local park this morning, one that I've been to before that's kind of close to the house, but I have to hike in 
and it's got a really nice bridge. Um, it's kind of just a brown, rusty bridge, but I always amp up the color some. Just a nice, simple scene. I do find that I like simple scenes better. There's a lot of walkers here, but um, I'm in, kind of tucked away in this nice little, like basically I'm in these bushes. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of whispering too. I don't know why, because everybody else that's walking by is talking really loud. I tried to keep it simple. I packed my bag three times this morning because I brought way too much. Um, so I decided to bring wet medium. So I brought my gouache, I brought just a few inks, and I did bring my Neo colors. I haven't touched those yet, um, but I do think I'm gonna make a quick sketch. I brought the sketch that I did out here last time, just as reference, and this time I brought just single sheets of paper. I'm not real sure why, but I did. Um, and real happy with what I've done so far. I'm going to put this aside and let this dry and try to get one more in. Um, but here's my view and it's just simple. But as your eyes adjust, you see a lot of like nuances of color and shape and marks. It's always better to carve back in like this than to paint like a big sky in because you are able to carve, you get more, you get interesting marks um, in the sky and then also around the things that you're painting and you just kind of forget, oh, there's a bridge. And so because of that, I'm gonna get better um, Sorry, I'm trying to paint, film, and explain. Yeah, just trust me on it. And if you haven't tried that, then try it. And try to just forget about the shapes, uh, like a, that's a tree or a bridge, and just kind of cut in. And then the movement of this sky paint will be better than if I just had to put a big, you know, washed in a big sky. Uh, place to sit because I sat on top of that rock was a nice kind of bench I was able to put all my stuff there and you can kind of see I was tucked kind of back behind that bush way over here and everybody else would like come down here and go over there with their dogs and stuff so um, yeah I was just way back over here and you can't even like walk here I mean the path goes back there but um, nice little cubby place back here uh, Hey there. Yeah, really fun day. Let me know if you have read any of those books or if you're gonna get any of those books or if you have any other compositional books to recommend or even any landscape. Like landscape is an art that's a little more abstract in my style, I'd love to know. Um, I'm often seeing like artist friends, like pictures of their like coffee table and I'm like, oh, could you flip through that book for me? Sometimes I'll message them and be like, could you flip through that book? Um, so I do hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy these books if you get any of them. The other thing before we wrap up I wanted to tell you about, if you have checked out my Substack before and felt some issues with the glitchiness of the videos, that is going to be fixed for the future. I am going to take extra steps now to upload them to YouTube and then import them or whatever you do into Substack, so I won't be using the Substack as my place where I host them. I have no idea if I'm using all the right language for all of that, but basically you get my gist. So if you've tried it and you've bailed because you're like, oh, this is frustrating, go back. Now all the older videos will still be like that, but going forward, we're good to go. Everything's gonna be perfecto. So I hope you go check it out. It's basically just another platform where I'm able to share my week. It's very casual. It's shorter videos than here. If you go right now, if you've not checked it out, you can binge watch a ton of videos and I just kind of take you along with me. It's basically like what I was doing for reels on Instagram, but with reels, I was feeling very just cramped with this short amount of time. And this gives me uh, an area to be able to do shorter videos, but still breathe and not have to I mean, I'm always breathing, but I mean like have some bandwidth. That's what I mean, like some 
space. I'm not feeling this like, oh no, 60 seconds. Um, but I think you'll find that there's a lot of great info there and it just kind of take you along on my week usually. Those of you that are following me over there really love it. So there's a link below. You can do two things. It will ask you if you want to, I think it's subscribe. You can check no and just go there like a website. The thing about that though, if you click no, is you will not get emails to notify you when I post. And I've been posting anywhere from two to three times a week. The last couple weeks have been slower because we've had a lot of heavy things going on in life. Um, but if you click yes to the subscribe or whatever it's called, then you will get an email every time I post. And you can even watch the video right there from your email if you want to. Or you can just go to it. You can get to it from my website, which is just sandyhester.com. Anyways, I just want to let you guys know about it because it's another place where I'm putting tons of great content on there. So. If you like my YouTube, you'll like that too, I think. Let me know if you like it. Um, okay, that is it for this week, I think. Yes, I'm trying to think if I had anything else to tell y'all about or update you about. I don't think so. I'll see y'all in two weeks. Bye. Mm -hmm.